So welcome to Charlie's Toolbox. Today we have a new series called Women Centering Themselves. This series highlights women worldwide working diligently to seek what they want out of life and carve out their own paths. I chose women for various backgrounds, age groups, and fields to show you various models of what women of women choosing themselves. Today we have the brilliant Tyler Young, a documentarian, screenwriter, producer, and director. Welcome, Tyler. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, you are. That is you. Oh that God. is you. So thank, thank you ahead. for having me. No problem. Um, first, I want to say I've been researching your background and you are very, very inspiring. Um, I saw that you are gaining some traction and funding your short film. Yes. Um, you've been awarded rewards from your screenplay. And can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your passion projects? Oh my goodness. Where do I start? <laughs> I am, I'm, I'm country through and through it, through, you're going to hear me. Um, you know, I, I can be professional and, you know, try to pronounce all the endings of my, of my words, but I am very much a Southerner, um, from South Carolina, when I say um, I practically grew up um, on farmland, I did. Um, <laughs> my grandfather um, owned um, land in South Carolina. And so I'm in a very rural part um, in Greenville, South Carolina. There's a small town called Traveler's Rest. And so um, I grew up there. Um, I spent a lot of time um, after school with my uh, grandmother. My grandmother is really the foundation for everything that I do. Carrie Anderson, um, I love her, loved her so very dearly. Um, she passed away in 2010. Um, so growing up, I spent that. a lot of time with her um, after school and she was blind. So, you know, TV was a huge thing um, for us. Of course, she couldn't see but I would describe what was on television to her. So that was really how we bonded. And even, you know, my grandmother was born in 1913. So, you know, and I'm born in 88, you know, she was in her seventies when I was born. And so um, when she and I would spend time together, you know, storytelling was huge. You know, she'd tell me about her day growing up. She'd tell me, um, cause my grandmother picked cotton. She'd tell me about all of that. And just the differences between our generations. And I didn't realize how that was shaping me for, for the future. Um, you know, every day we watch the news, chow. And I know you asked me um, to tell me about myself, but this, I swear I'm going somewhere. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful story. And I, and I appreciate you telling us this. Listen, I'm a true storyteller. But um, we spent a lot of time watching the news, like 4.30, well, 4 o'clock, Oprah, 5 o'clock news, 5.30 news, 6 o'clock news, baby, 6.30 news, world news. No, ma'am, honey, I would shut it down in the house. We was not watching it. But I didn't realize that, like, that was shaping me to become a future journalist. I studied broadcasting um, in college. And unfortunately, my grandmother passed away two weeks before... I graduated um, from college, so she didn't exactly get a chance to see me. But because, again, she's blind um, and she passed away, I said, you know what? My grandmother is actually finally getting to see me. And even though she never got a chance to see me um, physically in the flesh, I always said that she sees me better than anyone else. So that's really how I got started um, in television from sitting there with my grandma after school in the country. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is so beautiful. Like, um, so I have a, a close relationship with my grandma and I'm from the South as well. Mm. And just having that, those conversations and learning about her, like all of that wealth of wisdom that they provide is just like, I, I just, it's so invaluable to me. I wouldn't be who I am without that. So I understand where you're coming from when you're talking about like, you know, having this connection with her, talking to her throughout the day, being with her is like she was pouring into you, but you were also pouring into her. Black grandmas are national treasures. Um, mm -hmm. and I feel as though they are um, the backbone of our community. So um, I would, man, I get jealous. Y'all got a grandma. I ain't got no more grandmas. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, so, so, love on your granny when you say give it extra, you know, squeeze it a little tighter um, for me. Um, but yeah, I. I spent a lot of time with her, um, my parents at home, um, both of them worked. So again, after school, I spent time with my grandmother, mm -hmm. like the weekends. I mean, 
TV and movies were like a huge deal. I was watching In Living Color. Um, a, my, my first like TV memory is of Dwayne Way, um, Wayne on A Different World. Um, I had another lady that kept me when I was smaller. We watched In the Heat of the Night, Matlock, Mama's yeah, Family. Was- <laughs> okay, listen, I was in first grade mm-hmm. watching Days of My Lives. Like, this <laughs> <laughs> In the Heat of the Night, that was that was our show. <laughs> Bubba Skinner, like Bert, mm-hmm. Bert, Tibbs, we'll go to war over him. <laughs> so, uh, like you know, this this TV thing, my screenwriting amb- ambitions. This isn't something that just you know began you know last year. Didn't begin in my twenties. This is something that has has been in me um, from from the very beginning. So yeah, I've I've always known what I wanted to do with my life. I love that. <laughs> I really do. And I am so sorry that I've been, I don't know how to turn off my messages on my computer. So if you hear it being, please forgive me. Yeah, it's all good. It's yeah. Good. So I, in that vein, you know, you have all these pro- these projects developing. You're, you went through school, you're ambitious, you're hungry for this. How are you finding the confidence to execute them? Because it's one thing to have a dream, but it's another thing to start make putting actions to those steps the confidence i get to be a screenwriter and well uh, an emerging screenwriter and an emerging um director is from god my mama and my therapist all in that order um i I, you know everything i do i'm I'm very anchored in my faith um and I, i always say like god keep me in your will and in your way if there's anything that is not from you. I don't even want to touch it. <laughs> Anything that is not ordained by you, like keep it from me. And so I remember there mm-hmm. were so many years I'm like reaching out to this person, like, Hey, like I want to be a writer. Like, Hey, I want to do this. Like I'm applying for this fellowship. Like, you know, I'm sliding in DMs. Some people replied, some people didn't reply. Um, and I finally just got to a point. I was like, you know what, God, if this thing doesn't happen for me, I'm still enough. Like I'm, you've done so much for me already. If you don't do another thing for me, I'm good. And I found so much peace in that. But with that peace is where I got my confidence in knowing mm-hmm. like I'm gonna be okay. I don't have to control the outcome. I don't even have to control mm-hmm. the narrative. If I just show up and do my best and and try my best to, you know, always do the right thing. Of course, we all fall short um, at times. But he got all. I don't know favor. I, I just literally looked over. I'm reading a book by Joel Olstein called The Power mm-hmm. of Favor. I was trying to figure out what the last word I was looking for, favor. I, it's just favor. God's favor is is where I get my confidence. I, I love that. And when you, so, you know, there's faith and there's your uh, your gut. Are those one in the same or those are, how do you experience that? All of it is interconnected. Um, when I tell you my discernment, <laughs> I, I feel it. Like I, when something is not right, I mean, I cannot function. Like mm. is there somebody like around me that you know has you know ill intentions for me, or you know, or just not who they said they were. I I can't, I can't explain it. Like I, I feel uncomfortable. You know, I kind of get off my routine. I start questioning things. I start making mistakes, and I'm like, already. I'm out of alignment. Something ain't right. And I have a prayer. Dear listeners, listen, I, I, and I don't know what people's spirituality or, or religion, but whoever you pray to, only person I pray to is God, but whoever, you know, the <laughs> higher calling for you, there is a prayer that I pray that has been, it's been my anchor. And I always say, God, if there's anybody around me that's keeping me away from you, keeping pulling me from you and the call you have on my life, cast them out, get rid of them. Baby, when I tell you flies start dropping, Ooh. folks said, you know, people I said I was going to work with sending me emails. Hey, this isn't, I, I can't move forward with this. Mm. I get a text. Hey, we were supposed to meet up on this day. Actually, I'm not going to be able to make it. Maybe we can chat at another time. People start unfollowing me on Instagram, Twitter. Hell, I don't got a few blocks. I do not care. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I, and it's, it's, mm-hmm. It's all the foundation um, of that prayer. So I'm not, I know I just got up on a tangent, but no, my discernment no. is, um, honey, it ain't failed me yet. And <laughs> I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that at all. 
listen, but let, 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 but I can't I, I can't BS you right here. Sometimes I don't listen. Like I look good in red flags. Like folks will be like <laughs> right in my face. Things will be right in my face, and I'm like maybe like I, and I'll start making excu- making excuses for logic. I'll say maybe mm-hmm. that's not the thing. Maybe it's this, and you know you spin it to you spin it to a narrative that suits you and makes you feel comfortable, even though it's a lie. It's all a mm-hmm. lie. So, like, I, and I'm curious, like, how did you recognize that that you're like, okay, I'm I'm stepping out of alignment with myself. This is not necessarily what I would do. Like, how would you, how would you go about recognizing that? When things are falling, when things get necessarily difficult for I me, mean, excuse me, mm-hmm. unnecessarily difficult for me, that's when I know I need to step back. Something's not working. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we all need to work hard, you know, to, to you know, achieve your dreams and, and all yeah. the quotes, you know, things like that. But then sometimes it's like, is this self-inflicted? Is this supposed to be this difficult? Like, am I really, is yeah. this the right mountain I'm supposed to be climbing? So mm-hmm. I always... Me, I step back from things. Mm-hmm. I, I step back. I'm I am the queen of push pause. I'm the queen mm. of I'm the queen of I can't talk to you right now. I need to mm-hmm. get back in alignment. So I really just I, I I spend a lot of time by myself. Um and I think um about who's around me, who's influencing mm-hmm. me, and not just people like me. Another thing, um, I, I binge eat. I'm just gonna flat out like tell you that when I notice when I start eating, it's food, delicious. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I be tearing up some hot fries. I don't even know why mm-hmm. I be doing that. But like, like when I when I notice when I start eating hot fries or like mm-hmm. I'm going, I don't eat out a lot. But like if I if I go get like hibachi alive, if I'm like eating a lot of Chick Fil A. I realize mm-hmm. I'm like stressed out about something. This is comfort food. Mm-hmm. So that's how it's like your body is kind of like talking to you, yeah. telling you like, "Hey, you stressed it out? What's going on?" The other thing is sleep. So another thing, I be tearing up some naps, and oh, I realize I'm like, "Is this because you stayed up late last night for a deadline? Is this why you slept in this morning, or are you avoiding something? Why are you so tired?" What, what, why, why are you not feeling energetic? You slept eight hours last night and you've only been awake for four. Like, why, why are you tired right now? Mm-hmm. So just really recognizing my own patterns. Mm-hmm. So you like been doing a good job at listening to your body, kind of taking cues from your own actions. Now mm-hmm. I am, so you did say something that I would love to learn more about. What is this thing about push pause? I, was, I just listen. This is gonna be, this is gonna sound awful. Like, I if if something's not right, maybe it's not gonna sound awful. Let me shift my thinking here. Sometimes mm-hmm. some things are not meant to work. Some things are not from God. Like some things mm-hmm. were not some lessons. Uh, somebody said something to me recently. He was like, um, "This guy said the devil grants wishes too," mm-hmm. and I was like, "Well, I ain't giving the devil that much credit." But right. sometimes I realize that like me just like pausing, if that means me, when I, and let me, let me better explain what pausing means. That means mm-hmm. I may need to deactivate my Instagram. I may need to block some people on Twitter. I may need to mute some things. I need, mm-hmm. I pretty much me silence in the noise that are keeping me from God's, God's purpose for my life. That's I what like pushed me. Yeah, honey, like you got block out the noise. There's yeah. a, I want to say Michelle Obama, she spoke at Tuskegee University's commencement um, ceremony, maybe 2014, 2015. And mm-hmm. she was talking about how she was, um, when she first um, became the first lady, um, you know, she was stressed out about she was hurting her chances, her, her husband's chances for reelection. And yeah. Um, his overall, you know, image and, you know, uh, the things that people were saying about um, her, you know, what her daughter's going to see it and just really stressed out. And she said she had a lot of sleepless nights. And she said what she had to do was she had to block out all of the noise and trust God's plan for her life that everything was going to work itself out. That has what has been carrying me since because I quit my job. I used to be a news producer in Charlotte. um, And I think it was around the same time. And when I heard her say that, I was like, all right, that's it. This stress is over. Mm-mm. I just got to trust God. <laughs> that was the confirmation you needed. 
Yeah, yeah. I was like, if it's working for uh, the floaters, look, I, I'm, I'm there. I'm, yeah. This stress thing ain't it. So, yeah. so when you are thinking about, you know, being in alignment with yourself, trust in God, trust in your gut. How do you know the difference, or how can you figure out when to keep being motivated and when to step back? Like some challenges are challenges to develop some skill or something like that. Yeah. Some challenges yeah. are not supposed to be in what you are supposed to do, not in alignment with your path. How do you know the difference? Sometimes I don't. I'm I'm going to be flat out transparent with you because sometimes I do not get it right. Um, I look for confirmation. Sometimes um, God can send you love notes through people. You know, sometimes if something I've been worried about, you know, maybe a friend that I hadn't heard from in a while, you know, uh, one of my girlfriends I hadn't talked to in a while, she just sent me a text message recently. She was like, hey, I saw this scripture. And so if you're ever feeling ang- um, anxiety, you know, here, um, here's the scripture to get you through that. If you're nervous about something, you know, somebody send me an email, say, hey, like there's been times where I was in between projects and I was looking for work. And I'm like, you know, God, do I need to change job? Do I need to change careers? Like, you know, do I need to be doing something else? Somebody sent me an email. Hey, I saw this job opening. I think you should apply for it. That's another way that I know. I'm like, should I keep, you know, maybe, maybe this is the thing. Um, but stillness, stillness, I think uh, we're so busy. You know, um, I, social media is loud. Tw- like Twitter, True. like there's so many platforms. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, <sighs> Twitter. I mean, I'm sure there's so many more. I can't do them all. Like I, I never had Vine. I never had Snap. Um, I, Instagram, y'all get three swipes. I'm three scroll. My finger do doop doop doop. I'm through. And Facebook. <laughs> sometimes I get on there. So Twitter is my only platform that I really gravitate towards. But things can just get really, really loud. And I have to ask myself: Is this something that I believe, or is this something that I read somewhere and somebody else's opinion influenced mine? Hmm. And I interrogate my thoughts on everything. I like that a lot. And you're just kind of like, it, because you do, and like you said, social media is loud and you do need to figure out how to distinguish your voice from others. Like mm-hmm. it, it, oftentimes you can adopt someone else's point of view or their voice on, um, on things. And you think that it's yours, but it's not, it's not necessarily yours and it's not necessarily for you. So I think that is like, sometimes I think when you go into social media, you do need to be a bit more grounded in yourself so that you don't fall into those, some, some point of views that may not be beneficial for you. Yes. That's why I had like a drug raid one day I was going through my Instagram. Everybody got to go. And I was Mm -hmm. like, EEA. I was snatching accounts. Like, <laughs> block, block, block. Mute. I, don't, I don't block a lot of people. But I'm like, mute, mute, mute. Mm-mm. And not anybody that doesn't make me feel good about myself. Let me not say people. Any content that mm-hmm. doesn't make me feel good about myself, you got to go. Yeah. Like, off the gotta, yeah, <laughs> I agree with that. I, I am like a big, big proponent of purging things that do if they make you feel hopeless if they make yeah. you feel helpless if they make you feel bad you just move it out your way because you don't need any more messages like that you got enough yes but I, you know i also gotta say this social media has been such a blessing for me um for mm-hmm. my short film dying laughing i you know literally i had been praying about it praying about it god had um put this story in my heart um mm-hmm. I just before the the pandemic to write a story um, based off of my father. Um, He had a mortuary when I was younger. And so I came up with this story. I wrote a pilot. Um, I had representation at the time. I sent it to them. They was kind of like, oh, okay, that's cute. And so I ended up, Mm -hmm. you know, I made a difficult decision not to move forward in working with them, not just because of that project, Mm -hmm. but just, again, it just wasn't, it didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. You know, I would go back and I would look at the script, go back and forth. Um, And then this year, it's it's so funny, again, how God works. Um, I was working on a documentary and I was supposed to work remote. All of the documentaries, for the most part that I've worked on, I've been able to work for them remotely instead of, you know, the different cities where the production companies are located at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
number one, um, the director, um, Jen Shaw, who's so amazing. She's my friend. She told me to stop calling her my mentor. She's like, we're just friends, girl. I'm like, no, girl, you really my mentor. <laughs> um, she actually um, vouched for me and she got me, um, you know, a bump in being a story producer. So they needed me out in the fields. I was like, man, I wasn't trying to leave my house. But again, God, like, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be obedient. So mm-hmm. we so I'm on set and here I'm in Atlanta. So I go on set and we are about to interview Ahmad Aubrey's mother. And so, oh, wow. it's, I mean, it's a, it's a huge deal. Yeah. So I'm on set with her. Um, you know, I'm supposed to be taking field notes for, her. you know, I, you know, prepped her interview questions and all those things. And so I'm sitting there and she's like, okay, so look at this shot. And so, I, you know, we're going to do this lens. And then we're going to do this two shot. Girl, I don't care. Well, that's what I was saying. I was like, I don't, I'm like, director stuff I'm like that ain't got nothing to do with me because I, I was at the time I was very intimidated anytime I saw the cameras and stuff mm-hmm. I am your content girl I'm your the word girl I'm your research girl I can, mm-hmm. I, can, I can get your clearances I can do anything archive all those things but directing I've never been interested in that and so um you know she's telling me these things I'm listening I'm taking notes so she goes to sit down right before Ahmad's um, mom walks in um I'm looking at Jen and I, and she's so amazing. I'm just looking at her in all her glory. Mm -hmm. I heard God say, you can do this too. Oh, wow. I was like, they didn't even God. I was like, that was, was (laughs) who's talking? Who is that talking? (laughs) That was you girl. Mm -hmm. I rushed it off. And it's so funny. In a couple, like a couple of days later, they pulled me out of the field. It wasn't anything bad that Mm -hmm. happened. Um, But we just shifted some things. We had other team members that were going out in the field and they needed me to move ahead to post. So I post production. So they needed me back remote. And so I, you know, I roll with it. So then I have another gentleman going back to social media. He reached out to me. He's like, hey, Tyler, you know, his name is Aaron. Aaron's amazing. Aaron was like, hey, Tyler, like, you know, I've been working on this, this and this. And, you know, um, I'm just looking, you know, to continue building my community. You've done so many wonderful things. Can you mentor me? No, Aaron, I'm not going to mentor you, but call me. <laughs> so, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. and I was like, Aaron, I think you're doing better than you think you are. I'm like, we can work together, but I'm not going to mentor you. I'm like, you, you are fine. You are such a well-rounded <laughs> young man. Um, any advice or any pointers or any opportunities, I will give it to you. But no, I'm not going to be your mentor. Mm-hmm. In that conversation, I was like, you know, I may do a short film this year. I was like, I don't know. This is in April, by the way, April or May. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. So then from there, um, the director, Jen, and I are working on another short film together. She introduces me to her producer, Monique, who I would be co-producing with. Monique Mm -hmm. on a call together. She's from Mississippi. I'm from South Carolina. Both of us, you know, immediately hit it off as Southern Black filmmakers And so she was like, if you ever need anything on any of your projects, like, let me know. Like, I'd be happy to support you. And I'm like, I may do a short this year. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That being said, come August, this was um, my 34th birthday. My birthday happened. The next morning I woke up and I heard God say brick by brick. Mm. I was like, what does that mean? step at a time Mm -hmm. just brick by brick so i was like all right went on about my business i went um to a writer's retreat in palm springs i kind of had like a solo vacation when i got back your girl ain't had a moment of peace wow night i dreamed about the script i wrote Mm. night i would see it and i'm like i'm terrified I'm like, God, I've never wanted to direct. Like, God, I've always wanted to write and produce. God, I, I, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, you know what, God, I'm just going to trust you. I'm just going to flat out trust you. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, November the 1st, I set up a GoFundMe. I ain't got no money for a film. I have mm-hmm. to pay anybody. Right. It's expensive. It's very expensive. I reach out to Aaron again. Hey, Aaron, I know I told you I was going to follow up with you like in September, like I, here it is, October. Like, are you still available? He's like, well, I'm in grad school right now. Um, when are you looking? I'm like, December. I'm this. Everything's make believe. Mm-hmm. Like, right. Like, in December. And he goes, um, I have finals in December. Like what weekend in December? December. Making up stuff. I'm like, December 9th. He's like, oh, perfect. I can do it. Mm. I I reach out to Monique. Monique, I ain't got no money. 
Monique, are you, can you go on this journey with me? She's like, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever you need. No, back to November 1st, I launched the GoFundMe. I raised $3,000 that first day. Oh, wow. Child, huh? I, oh, I, wow. At most, let me tell you, at most, I was thinking I would get $1,000. Mm-hmm. At maybe fifteen hundred, and I thought I, it would take me two months, two or three months to get there. Mm-hmm. Tell you, God can do it exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Mm-hmm. Based off of my obedience to Him, so I was like, okay, I got three thousand dollars. Me and her were working on a budget together. Who I don't even, again fake numbers. Imagine mm-hmm. literally playing with Monopoly money. So I say all that to say. The first 30 days, I raised $10,000. Oh, wow. That is the power of community. Oh, my gosh. That's why I had to clean clean up what I had to say about social media. I was like, "Uh -uh." let me tell the truth. Because Twitter Twitter showed up for me. I'm going to talk trash about TikTok and Instagram. They're not my problem. (laughs) Twitter's your baby. (laughs) Because only four people on Instagram um, donated. But Twitter showed up for me. So then, I, it's because every day I was praying, I was like, God, because I, I I was getting worried about stuff. I'm like, you know, I don't have any crew. I know nobody. I know like two people in Atlanta. I'm like, I don't know mm-hmm. any local crew. You know, I don't ha- I don't know anything. Me and Aaron were having calls. Um, Aaron is so amazing. Aaron came with all the equipment. Aaron, I didn't have to oh purchase. My gosh, I, I ended up renting audio equipment, and, and my audio guy, he had the bulk of it. I think. Let me not even get into t- the technical stuff. And I went and paid for something. Anyway, <laughs> and so um, I was like, okay, God, there were some other things that were still outstanding. And one day I remember I was standing in my apartment. I'm like pacing back and forth because I have a standing desk. And I'm like, you know, I'm right in here and there. And I said, you know what, God, this is not my problem. This is your problem. You mm. told me to do this. I was obedient to you. Figure it out for me. And mm-hmm. when I, you, I got a whole crew of people, whole oh. crew, down to like, there would be people, I remember I said a prayer, one, one guy had signed up to do a, a certain position, he was cool, he came recommended, I, I prayed, and I was like, you know what, um, God, if there's anybody not meant to be on this production, remove them and place in the right people, the next day he texts me, hey, I don't think this is a project for me. Wow. And it was not a specific prayer for him. Yeah, it was, it was just generally putting it out there. He sat down, the uh, people, there. I had two people because one girl couldn't work the whole weekend. Two people that came in to do his position were phenomenal people. I would work with them again. So then I had another girl. She couldn't make it. She had a a scheduling thing. And I knew I hadn't heard from her. I said, God, work it out. She Mm -hmm. said, hey, I can't. She texted me the day before production. Hey, I cannot make it. I'm going to recommend another girl that I know. She'll show up for you. Mm. People don't know me from Adam showed up for me. Casting, I mean, I, I it was a lot of literally one of my friends. Um, she's the lead. Her name is um, Jizzy Wallace. Mm-hmm. He, um, she and I met. We were extras on a TV show in Charlotte many years ago, and I mm-hmm. know that thing is her thing. I was like, hey, girl, like so. And her husband, he's an actor too. Both of them are just so talented. His name is Brian. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, y'all, like y'all want to be in my short film? They were like, yeah, what's about? So I don't really know yet. <laughs> so Yuzi, you gonna be somebody's sister? I said I know that, so I'm gonna go ahead and put you there. And then I said, Brian, like I'm gonna have you be this one character, Maurice. And that's all I got right now. They both told me yes. This was in September. They both told me yes. They showed up. They did the table read with me, as if like, and it wasn't like they were just my friends. They showed up like professional actors. They asked the proper questions. I mean, it was, and they, they, anytime I gave them notes about their performance, they would shift it. I, again, another, um, other people that I reached out, I DM, hey, I know you don't know me. You want to come be in my movie? Sure. Wow. Pernell this is Walker. like I cannot believe how like easy this fell through. It's just yes. like the pot, the steps were kind of already there. You just putting the pieces together. Yes, another um person. I'm just going back to the um, 
the um, strength of social media. Pernell Walker is a fantastic um, actress. She and I follow each other on Twitter. She's been on amazing shows like City on a Hill on Showtime. She was in Pariah. She was mm. in The Break with Kimmy Smith. Dude, mm-hmm. all these things. And like, I just thought she was such a fantastic actress. She started following me, and then we were DMing each other one day, just like, hey, girl, like, oh, my God, like, you know, it's so cool we connected on here. And I'm like, girl, I be watching you on TV. Like, that is so cool. Right. So one day, so that was like a year ago, me and her DM. So we were, um, I was, I'm producing a short film through Queen Latifah's Queen Collective program um, with Tribeca Studios. So I was producing um, a short film, and we needed a mom. And so it's like, oh, my God, like, who can I reach out to? Um, Because we were, you know, time was like winding down and we were still trying to figure out casting. We hadn't done an audition for mom. I just flat out sent her DM. Hey, girl, you want to be in this movie? Mm -hmm. Yes. And she's in it. Like, yeah, it's coming out. man. (laughs) That that is like, this is amazing. And this is, um, so I've been interviewing different women and this thread of community has been very central into like how they're centering themselves, how they're finding their careers, how they're finding, you know, who they are. So it's, it's great to hear that community is a big part of this story. And I want to know, like, how are you, you were reaching out to people, you were building relationships. How are you, how do you continue to do that? How do you, you know, make sure that you are pouring into the right people? You don't know. Uh (laughs) (laughs) again everything is imaginary i mean because i mean the worst somebody could say is is no i've been told Mm -hmm. times um when i was in college um one of my late professors his name was haney howell he was amazing um like veteran he was a um a correspondent for during vietnam like this man knew his stuff he taught us early on about journalism and just working in a newsroom is like you know rejection is part of the process like you mm-hmm. know you story ideas you get shot down when you get you know whenever you apply for jobs you're gonna get shot down you know um but you know pretty much was he was not a spiritual man he wasn't a religious man either mm-hmm. but pretty much he was like you know you just hang in there and like all the pieces will move around you know the the way they're supposed to if you keep showing up and doing your part mm-hmm. so anytime that um I get rejected and not so much from a job, but like if someone I reach out to, you know, they don't necessarily give me the, the response that I was looking for. I Mm -hmm. I saw one year it said, um, man's rejection is God's protection. Mm -hmm. Okay. You sent my person child. Thank you. Bye. (laughs) A lot of times it's, it's pretty much like you just moving in the, like those nose, it's it's like a GPS. Like you're just re rerouting. You're never lost. You're just rerouting to where you're supposed to be. That's, that's all it is. That's how I look at it. Community has been huge um, for me. Again, social media, we're halfway at our crowdfunding um, goal right now. Child and pay some money out my pocket. I don't know where. Mm-hmm. I'm like, do, do they have auditions on P Valley? I'm like, how, I'm like, how does that work? <laughs> like, this girl about to be down in the valley. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Like, okay. <laughs> Fans, you know she's gonna shake it like yeah, that's, okay. <laughs> that's where i'm at right now um, mm-hmm. you know, people are still somebody hit me up one day hey girl i don't know you i wish i could give more but like you seem cool and like i believe in you here go 25 dollars is not a lot mm-hmm. people say things like i could it mean you. something that that it's not even that it's when people say i wish i could give you more i can only give you ten dollars ten dollars got us water $10 right $10. right now, all of it helps Yes, all of it helps. Um, and my, my crew, I had a diverse crew, primarily women, um, mm-hmm. very black, hella black mm-hmm. on my set. But everybody, um, you know, was really great. Um, people from all backgrounds came together. And, you know, I was talking to my DP, Aaron, afterwards, and he was like, you know, there were quite a few people on the crew that were saying this is the best set I've ever been on. Oh, wow. I was like, that's even better. <laughs> you again, like you never know. And I, I can't say literally, if I think back, this was a three day shoot. If I think back over everything that happened over those three days, we had maybe three mishaps. And when I say three mishaps, they are small, like me maybe stepping on some gum. Like like to like that minor stuff. 
that love very minor stuff. And and here goes the thing though, anytime a mishap, like we had a situation with one of the locations falling through last minute and um, the location um, that I had, I had tailored my script to it because it's a mortuary. I don't have an embalming room. Yeah. You know, I had to change all these things based off this one mortuary I was going to shoot at. And so it didn't work out. But then I ended up, um, we, we had another, there's a, a funeral college called, a mortuary college called Gumpton Jones. Yo, when I tell you literally a couple of hours, which is like the night before we were supposed to shoot, um, we reached out to these people and they were like, sure, like, yeah, come, y'all can come be in here. And mm. all the stuff that I had, and they don't, they did not know us. Mm-hmm. All the stuff that I had taken out of my script because I didn't have it this place had it. So I was able to put it back in my script and we had even more exceedingly and abundantly <laughs> as we think. That is, this is a incredible, this yeah. is really an incredible story. And I want to thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, we are going to have to wrap this conversation up, but before we do, I want you to plug your short, I want you to show, tell the audience where they can find it so that they can donate. Um, and any other thing that you would like to plug, please do, because I think that what you're doing is incredible. I'd love to see more stories out there created by you. And any way that I can support, I will support. So here's the stage for you. First off, it's so funny. I'm literally sitting over here looking at a client. I'm like, girl, you've been talking for 30 minutes. And I think this is a 30 minute interview. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, y'all. I didn't mean to take a no, moment. no. I, I I wish it could go longer, but I want to be careful for your time and mine. No, no, no. You, honey, I could go on and on talking about the goodness of the Lord, honey. I'm like one of them over. <laughs> my short film. Um, this is one of those moments where I totally wish I had created the page already. Um, we are setting up social media for dying laughing. Um, but for right now, um, you can follow me on sh- at on Instagram and Twitter at she is. Tyler, and that's where I'll be posting all of my film updates, all of my projects. Um, I tweet about them all the time. Instagram, uh, my website is girltyler.com. I do have a GoFundMe for the short film, Mm -hmm. uh, which I will be posting um, as well. I think like the title on GoFundMe is Help Tyler direct her first short film or something like that any amount in the bio bio. thank you literally any even if y'all think five dollars won't do anything five dollars is actually going farther because i have been working this money to surgical precision so Mm -hmm. i'll share updates soon about film festivals because that's about to be our next game plan um for the film Oh, wow. Congrats. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Um, y- your story is just so lovely. And I hope to, you know, keep in contact with you because this this is an incredible story. So thank you. Absolutely. And thank you for giving me a platform to share my story. Um, we were talking about this before we started recording. Um, this is actually my first podcast interview ever. I've been telling people no all the time for asking me, but I just loved your energy um, on, on Twitter when you and I were messaging and just throughout this whole process. So thank you for giving a space to women like me to just like kind of share our journeys and just really have this community. So I appreciate mm-hmm. it. No problem. No problem at all. For show notes, be sure to check out charliestoolbox.com. Follow Charlie on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Charlie's Toolbox. Thanks again for listening to Charlie's Toolbox.